Well, ChatGPT went viral in a record pace. And while most people think about the U.S. and its latest tech advancements, there's a lot happening in generative AI in our own backyard. In the case of BNN Bloomberg, literally in our backyard, Toronto-based Cohere has raised $175 million U.S. in two funding rounds that even included Salesforce as a participant. Aidan Gomez is the co-founder and CEO of Cohere, and he joins us now. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. So that's a lot of walking around money for a Canadian tech company. And we like ni nice, tidy narratives. And so we've been calling you kind of the chat GPT for businesses. But is that is that accurate? Um, somewhat. I I'd say we're more general than just chat or dialogue. So we're focused on stuff like summarization or classification of language. In principle, Cohere's whole objective is to help businesses build products, build software that understands language. And you've been at this for a lot longer than I think ChatGPT kind of splashed onto the scene. What did that moment, though, do for you as a business um, in terms of inquiries that you were getting and helping to accelerate growth? Yeah, ChatGPT was, you know, kind of a light bulb moment, I think, for the whole world. It, it's a really important thing to remember that this was probably the first time most people had interacted with something that felt intelligent and wasn't a human. It was silicon. Um, and so for us at Cohere, it's just accelerated the excitement, the interest, um, and the understanding in the technology. Because now people have like first party experience interacting with these models. I also think that it's sort of classically Canadian, where we look at this tech, and in the US, they apply it to the consumer. And what Canada does really well is we apply it to business. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe that's true. I, I mean, definitely, I think. Right now, the opportunity in business is so huge. The technology promises to increase efficiency and productivity of workers. Like, I don't think we've ever seen anything like it. So look, can you give me an example like, of the kind of company that comes to you and, and how they're using that to you know, absolutely blow the doors down on efficiency? Yeah, so one good example is Spotify uh, and their ability to do searches across a ton of different languages. So we offer a search platform, we call them embeddings, um, which are multilingual in 109 different languages. And so for companies that are global and they're serving a huge market with many different speakers of different languages, that's a huge feature to have, right? You just can't access people who uh, don't speak the language of your technology. So changing the technology to mm. be able to speak the user's language is a huge, uh, important asset. Obviously, there has been kind of a, a sector washout in tech, specifically in 2022. And we're potentially on the eve of some sort of economic slowdown. One area, though, of optimism is spending on artificial intelligence. As somebody who's on the ground floor of that, do you, you know, we're trying to figure out, is this a bubble or is this something mm. real? Um, is it something real? Is this a resilient area of tech spending by businesses? I, I think it is. It has, it, you, we're obviously very fortunate to have been protected in this uh, broader turndown. But I think despite the broader changes in the economy uh, and markets, certainly within this technology, it's coming to fruition now. And so this is the time where it's going to start getting integrated into billion user products. It's going to be integrated into the largest organizations in the world. And so the time is now. Investors are seeing that. And so as a product, we certainly haven't suffered in the same way the broader tech ecosystem has. And do you have, you have a product? You're not still in development phase, uh, not in pre-revenue phase? No, no. You can, you can sign up yourself and play around with our models, interact with them, ask some questions. Um, yeah, please do. And how do you charge? So we charge on a usage-based model. Hmm. Um, so for you and I, if we were just playing around with the model, it's actually totally free. Um, but once you surpass a certain limit and you're putting it into production, um, you start paying per interaction with the model. So hmm. each time you have an exchange with it. Now, we know that as part of this kind of washout and tag, VCs have been really focused on the bottom line and profitability. Has that extended to your sector as well? Are you a lot more conscious about are you profitable or getting to profitability? Uh, so definitely the sentiment among investors, even within our space, is pointing in the same direction. Okay. People want to know that there's a secure, healthy business that can be built. Um, so that's definitely translated. For Cohere specifically, we're not yet profitable, but uh, obviously we have very healthy unit economics and um, 
have a clear trajectory towards. A lot of um, tech companies have looked, specifically Canada, I've heard them talk about what's going on with respect to the layoffs as being an opportunity to pick up talent that otherwise, you know, was difficult to get. Has that been your experience? Totally, yeah. With, with the layoffs, a lot of really good people uh, got let go. And so for startups and for basically every company that is still hiring, still growing very quickly, um, you know, it's great to be able to get access to talent that was locked up inside these mega, mega corporations. And do you have to still, you know, I know that paying up for it and, and being able to uh, provide that, has some of that come off a little bit? Um, like the, the expense, like the high yeah, expense? Yeah, just in terms of salary. You know, it was kind of yeah. an interesting look to look at tech and, and wage growth. Yeah. Um, you know, it was super competitive, right, to, to get talent. Has that come off? Are you a little bit more in the driver's seat? You know what, within, within my space in particular, AI, it is still so competitive. So competitive. There, I, I think there's like some estimates that there's maybe 250, 300 people on the face of the planet who know how to do this stuff. Wow. And so uh, the competition has not let up at and, all. And, and just lastly, remain in Canada, is that an advantage to you? Absolutely, this is, this is home and it's also the the epicenter of AI, right? Like yeah. this is where it was developed. This revolution that we've seen in the past let's say 11 years, um, it was really driven out of Toronto, you know, a couple blocks away from where we are now. Um, so I'll, I'll do everything I can to keep the company here and to keep our HQ here.